up with guiding light. Yes, it is rather early, Alex. Now I wanted to catch you before you left for the office. Would you stop by here first? It's important. <laughs> there is a threat that must be quashed. Well, I was uh, just on my way out, so I'll stop on by. Coffee, Ginger. I don't feel like any breakfast this morning. No, I don't think I'm Ginger. And why are you here, Jenna? I come to tell you to keep your hands off my future. Fighting for hey, why does she get mascara and I don't? Miles, <laughs> think of it. We're really going to be on soulmates. All oh, right, and how are you people doing? Hmm? We people are Well, we are, are raring to go. We are just raring to go. Oh. Rick, shouldn't you be shooting a promo right yes, now? Yes, Patience, darling. I, we know what we're doing. And so do the Coopers, right, Nadine? Deanie, right, Buzz? Right. Uh, Buzz, will you lighten up? You look like you just escaped from the state pen. Yes, well, it's getting close to magic time. All right, quiet. What channel is this show on, you know? Am I late? Oh, here it is. Look, David, look, honey. Here, I'll turn it up. Hi, I'm Mark McEwen, along with the lovely and talented Hannah Gray. Your favorite game show is coming up next, right here on WSPR, as two Springfield couples take on our two-time soulmates champs, Don and Darlene Darling from Chicago. Find out whose marriage is a match made in heaven and whose just might be headed for a recall. Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. Am I right, Hannah? Right, I'll get it. Oh, oh hang on. Hello, wheels and meals. Ah, I think it's for you. Thank you. Hello? Holly, what, what, is, is everything all right? Why'd you call me at the hotel, and what number am I calling you at? The diner, where are you? All right, Holly, I, I want you to promise me you'll take this in the right spirit. You're scaring me, Roger. I just broke into the best guarded, highest security office in Hong Kong.
all wrong. Everything's wrong for there. How did that happen? Am I wrong too? Am I just plain too old for this? Now, look, my attorneys, Alan Michael's attorneys, will thrash this whole thing. I'm well aware that you are prepared to punish Alan Michael for using Spalding clients. As I said, the attorneys will handle And it. I am prepared not to sell to those clients. And how is that? I'll just get new clients. How? I don't think you'll have any means to continue, or must I remind you that... <sighs> this greasy little enterprise was started with my money. You no, know, you don't need to remind me. I'm well aware that you'd like to share in the profits. You still don't get it, do you, Jenna? See, the profits from your little uh, Piccadilly, whatever you want to call it, company, would not keep me in paper clips. Oh, if Leicester Square Lotion was such a bad proposition, if you could care less whether it sinks or swims, why do you want to shut me down so badly? <laughs> You know, I remember a time where you were almost nice to me. When I was sitting in your place, living in this house, married to Roger carrying his child. And you, Alex, were the one who set me straight. You told me that I couldn't believe any of his promises, that it was all based on a lie. And you were right. He took far more than he ever gave, and I lost a child over that. I took your words to heart, and I have not allowed my future to be based on anyone's promises or anyone's generosity ever since that day. That's what propelled me into starting this own business. I created it mine. I, 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 I gave birth to it, practically. Now, all it's meant to do is to provide something for me and my future. I don't really wish to compete with you, Alex. Allow me to keep Leicester Square. That's all I'm asking you. Ross, I couldn't let him sleep on the streets. Apparently not. Well, he was in no condition to drive. He didn't have a place to go. I'll throw him off the yard. Where are my glasses? On top of your head. Oh. Look, I know because Frank was over here and crashed a couple weeks ago, you're thinking that I'm using this place as a home away from home for all my expos. It's not Frank, okay? It's the yappas one over there. I'm really sorry, darling. Don't be sorry. Just buy him a rowboat and get him out of here. Uh, so, Ross, you're, you're going to see my Aunt Alex, huh? A tiny rowboat. Mm. What, what did she want to talk to you about? Anyway. I work for Spaulding, not for you. I don't have to put up with your questions or your visits to my office or my home. Okay, okay. Ross! Lego. Sorry, I... Sorry, I got you into trouble. I won't be here when he gets back. Oh, Ellen Michael. Where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? Come on. When it comes to the self-delusion tournament, Jenna, you, you're seated number one. <laughs> Head and shoulders above the rest of us. Oh, yes. We don't even belong on the same court. Now, in the same courtroom, that's a different matter. Must you threaten me now, Alex? You can try to persuade yourself that you own this little lotion company, Jenna, the same way you tried to think you own Spalding, which was never the case. You don't own Lester, and you never will. If you think that I have designs on your nephew, you're quite mistaken. I am merely stating the facts. I own Spalding. You were funded by Spalding, which means you own nothing. I do.
who realize there are technicalities in the contract that say I cannot sell to sporting clients. Funny about technicalities, yes, yes. All contracts are constructed on technicalities. Technicalities are contracts. That's why my attorneys pay so much attention to contracts. I'm well aware that the law is on your side at this moment. And forever. Oh. I only wish there were something more I could take from you, Denna. You have been... very cruel to me in the past. I'm just not the sort of person that turns the other cheek. I'm more the kind of, um, an eye for an eye type. And if it weren't for Buzz, you wouldn't have any of this back. Have you forgotten? You and Buzz? I mean, <laughs> what is this? You protect him, he, he defends you, you defend him, he protects you. You two, why aren't you together? Wait, wait, I mean, wait, wait, really, wait, wait, you're such me. a cut out of the same What mold. do you mean that he protects me? Oh, asking yourself. This conversation is ended. Good day, Jenna. Hmm. I am smiling. No, but you think you are. What you're looking for is that old toothpaste thing, you know. Wait mm. till we, we're actually on the air. Buzz, you gotta be real careful about what you talk about. Oh, you you mean like mentioning the fact that I didn't come home for 20 years might blow it? Buzz, what? not a word about me being married to Billy. Oh, you're taking all the fun out of this, Nadine. But we can't risk anybody finding out that we're not married right Nadine, now. Nadine, half of Springfield knows we're not married. A lot of people can blow it for us. Why would anybody want to do that? Now everybody's rooting for all us. All set, Coopers. Hey, ready to rock and roll, Rick. <laughs> Five minutes. Fun. That was perfect. That was perfect. No. Oh, great. <laughs> So, Roger Thorpe owns this station, right? Yeah, he's one of the owners. Mm -hmm. Why, do you know him? I met him. I met him, played golf with him. That's what we did. He's a charming guy, if I recall. So charming that uh, I didn't say anything when he was cheating on his golf score. Okay, people, three minutes and counting till magic time. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Thorpe. Oh, hello, Mr. Thorpe. So you think Alex wanting to see Ross has something to do with you? Uh. My aunt's been chomping at the bit to bring fraud charges against me. Not to mention breach of contract for good measure. I don't know, boy. You live with a lawyer. Does that sound like jail time to you? Oh, I don't think Alex would do that to you. I think she'll cool off. Yeah. Besides, it doesn't matter. Ross would never take the case. Why do you say that? Because we made an agreement that he would not <sighs> take any case that our loyalties might lie in opposite directions. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, I got nothing else left to lose. Oh, oh. oh talk about colossal screw-ups. I played every card that I had wrong. I left Spalding because my aunt wouldn't give me the presidency, and then when she finally decides she's going to give me the presidency, what do I do? I turn it down. Now that, that is the mark of a shrewd business mind. Only to be topped by my astute grasp of personal relationships. Elaine. So sure. I was so sure, Blake, that I was going to get her back this time, that I was this close to it, when the truth was I was a million miles away. I mean, why didn't I see that, Blake? Huh? Why? It's no big mystery, Alan Michael. Look, I don't mean to rub this in. Aside from the fact I have told you this a dozen times, but, uh... Oh, honey, you were raised to believe that... everything that is safe and secure... It, it's always taken away from you. You know, the family business, and yeah. your wife, your brother, your parents. But why? Huh? I mean, Lucy said that I, I, I seem to set myself up for this, this kind of thing. And I'm willing to take the responsibility and the consequences. But what makes me so desperate enough in my life that I always take the wrong turn every single time? Holly, if it 
one name that intrigues me. Which one is that? The last one on the list, Tashua. No, he could be the key. Nobody seems to know anything about him, but I can tell you it's absolutely impossible to get on the phone. I've tried a dozen times to set up a meeting, and all I get is the Hong Kong runaround. Can we turn on that input charm? I've pulled out all the stops, let me tell you. This guy's either some sort of recluse or I don't know what. Or he knows who you are and why you're there. Well, I'm banking that he doesn't know my reason for being in Hong Kong. Anyway, I should find out in a few minutes. It's his office I broke into. Oh, terrific. Roger, now I'm going to say the obligatory, be careful, but I mean it. Please, I want you home in one piece. You know, I'm really beginning to like this co-conspirators thing. We should have thought of this years ago. No, my nerves never could have stood it. They're just barely hanging on now. When I get back, you and I are going to co-conspire like crazy. Roger, come home now. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. I want you to hang up the phone and get out of there. I love you. Roger, hello? You know what to do. Why are you in here, please? Who are you? Ah, well, you must be Mr. Tashua's secretary. He said you'd be working late. He uh, wants me to bring him the Spalding files. He said you'd know where they are. I will have to be calling our guard. A remembrance of things past. <laughs> On the road, the back road, the old road. No schedules to keep, no one to answer to. Stop when I please, meet anyone I please. Be anyone I please. Hello? was a woman hollering. Well, lady truckers did good, didn't you say that? Then you go take care of her. You want to work, don't you? Isn't that what you said when you walked here, in here on Monday? But you haven't done a lick since. I don't do breakfast. Besides, how would it look if I were to walk out there like this? Pretty good. But you're right. If Mama heard, she'd fire my butt. Or try to steal you for herself. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was taking inventory in back. What can I get you? Uh, a breakfast. I would like two four steaks and whole wheat toast. That girl needs worse than anything is cable. Today's soulmates is coming to you from WSPR, our affiliate in Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, for the past month, we've been conducting a national search to find the marriage most made in heaven. A husband and wife who, through their love and understanding, proved that they were meant to be together. And in the midst of all of this search, maybe we'll find out a little bit more about our spouses, how much we know, how little we know. All right, let's meet our loving couples. Do you remember this couple from last week? They are our two-time soulmates champs, Don and Darlene Darling from Chicago. from Springfield, Springfield's own Eugene and Lola Costa. Eugene is an electrical engineer and Lola is a homemaker. So let's 
that's what she's been doing all these years. I had no idea. Well, that's a cost the guy is funny. <laughs> Just wave a Buzz and Nadine step up to the plate. I don't know. Buzz looks kind of nervous to me. Buzz and Nadine Cooper. It says here that Nadine is an entrepreneur. Good, just what we need, dueling entrepreneurs today on this show. Uh, I've never been able to ask this question before. Buzz, what exactly does an entrepreneur do? Stuff. He makes me feel like every other woman dreams of feeling. Woo, Buzz, yes. hubba hubba. Woo, get a little hot in here. Hey, to ring the dog for me, please. <laughs> Buzz. Well, while I'm cooling down right here and Hannah's ringing the gong, let me tell you how the couples can go on to become the national champions. Here's the deal. The couples that make it through four rounds of our regional tournament of love will be flown to New York City and to compete for the national championship. All right? Good luck to everybody. Now, the first question will start with the husband, so we have to soundproof the ladies. Ladies? Ah, oh, damn. What? What's the matter? Well, I was hoping Nadine would get the first question. She's obviously more into it. Well, know? I hope she's not too much into it, because I don't think she's going to get much help from Buzz. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, Buzz. Get it together. Please put on your headphones. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, goody. They can't hear us. Let's talk about it. Now that they've got those on over there, we give you a chance to let the rest of the country know exactly what you think about your wives sitting over there. Let's see what our first category is going to be. Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Ooh, we love Hannah. Okay, Don, you are a returning national champ, or returning two-time champion. Let's start with you. Let's see what our first category is. <laughs> boom, boom. What a surprise. It's sex, Don. How about that? Okay, here's the question. Does Darlene have a particular type of clothing that really turns you on? Hold on, big guy. There's more. If the answer is yes, what is it, and why does it do what it does to you? Yeah! <laughs> I think we struck a nerve here. Hold on to that nerve, all right? We have another question. Let's move on to Eugene. Hi, Hannah. Okay, here we go. Eugene, are you ready? You look ready. If there was evidence that a certain food enhanced and increased sexual activity, but it was a food that you couldn't stomach, that you hated the taste of, would Lola serve it to you? Now, you think about that for a second. I'm a little food for thought, that's what we're going to call that. Hang on to that, all right? We have one more. Buzz, you're up next. Buzz, Buzz, you look a little skeptical. You okay? Yeah, Buzz, it's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun with Buzz and knock that not-so-nice look off his face, put a smile on it right after this. We'll be back after commercial break, all right? Good morning, everybody. Davros, can I get a black coffee to go? Stronger the better. Wait, wait, I want to watch this. Ah, it's okay, Stavros. It's showing a commercial. <laughs> Where is your soulmate? She was supposed to meet me here for breakfast. Yeah, all I know is I woke up, found her ex-husband asleep on our sofa, so she may be giving Alan Michael a tour of the rest of the house. Alan Michael slept over at your house? Yeah, I know. A long time ago, you warned me about Blake and Alan Michael. No, but you don't believe that Ross, she's not good. That time before was... Yeah, was just a slip. Didn't mean anything. A faux no, fall. it didn't. Maybe not, but if Blake wanted to take up a hobby, why didn't she consider knitting? I don't know. It was really strange, Alan Michael. I mean, she had the oddest look on her face. And this was the club? Yeah, she was... Well, she kept asking me questions about your father, about the wedding present he sent us. Mm. That's not so strange, Blake. I mean, he is getting out of jail soon. And if there's one person that my aunt is afraid of, it is the Alan Spaulding. Uh, if I were you, I'd use it. What do you mean? Well, instead of letting Alex walk all over you like this and throwing you out with a spalding trash, why don't you go to your father and tell him what his sister is doing to his son? I bet you Alan would stop it like that. Don't you think? It's a good question that I really don't have the answer to. Well, you're never going to find out unless you go tell him what's going on. Blake, I don't think he has much use for me. I mean, he's never really given me any inkling as to that. You know. Besides, it's possible that he blames me more than my aunt for his being in jail. Listen, Alan Michael, you know, sitting around here discussing these possibilities isn't going to do anything. Listen, you should go see him. You know that I am no big cheerleader of Alan Spaulding, but I do know this. A father is a father. How many times has my father told me that he would never forgive me for this or some such thing? But he always did. 
Thanks for letting me crash here. <laughs> uh, maybe I can get a room at the club. Make your husband a lot happier. Thanks for the coffee, too. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I will go see him. I mean, if anything, he's going to be able to tell me uh, what one does when all one has is one's name. Have you been to our office before? No. I must be mistaken. But I do know your employer, Mr. Tashua. You are lying. Mr. Tashua does not know you. You busted me. But I have tried to call this office numerous times to make an appointment, and I was always turned down, and I believe you're the person to whom I spoke. Roger Thorpe, that is you. That is me. I told you before on the phone, Mr. Soap. I told you how Mr. Tashua does not want to speak with you. Yes, but I never told you my real reason for wanting this meeting. See, I have reason to believe that Mr. Tashua has an interest in sporting enterprise. I do not know what you are talking about. Yes, but you do know Spalding, because I saw it in your eyes the minute I mentioned the name. See, I too have an interest in Spalding. Uh, I know the entire management team. I am or have been on intimate terms with most of them, past and present. I even ran the company myself. And I happen to believe that this interest I share with Mr. Tashua could be beneficial to both of us. It is not possible. He won't see you. He's not here. Yes. I do understand the need for discretion. Why don't we do this? I'm going to be in Hong Kong for several days. I'll be staying at the Princess Hotel. Or, if Mr. Tashua prefers, he can contact me at my office in the United States. May I leave my card with you? I hope you have fun on your vacation. Thanks. How'd you know I'm a tourist? Oh. Listen, do you know any way I can avoid that highway going west? I'd much rather take a, a little old road, but I can't seem to find it on the map. Yeah, all you have to do is head out here and take a left. You can follow the traffic. Oh, and don't worry if you don't see any signs. There ain't any for about 12 miles. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. How's it going, Dee? Pretty good, Carl. Coffee light, no sugar? Wish I could. No time. Uh, thanks to the troopers over in Ohio, they got us looking for someone. The last time we headed this way. Is he a serial killer or something? Just what we need around here to bring in some more business. Can you have him stop by? Well, I was wondering if he already had. You serious? Yeah, he was spotted hitchhiking uh, just down the road over in Weedsport. We figure he's trying to make his way to California. You haven't seen him, have you? Okay, here we go. Back to the Coopers. And the Coopers, come on out, who are in second place, and they have a chance of catching the Darlings. All right. The question, the first question that we asked Buzz while you were in your little soundproof booth over there was, what would Deanie do if he told her he was in love with another woman? I would say it was just all in his head. Yes! Yes! Oh, right, baby! Yes! You can expect some rocky roads. No, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got that right. How come it's just expect rocky roads? Okay, next time. Okay, then with the next question. Next question is this. You're actually doing very well. Here's the question. What does Deanie put on when she wants her man? Give me like perfume or something. What does Deanie put on when she wants her man? A 
slideshow? Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, a slideshow? <laughs> you need to spend more time together. <laughs> Well, we're going to give you some time to do that if you get this next question correct. This question is the last question that you'll have a chance to catch the darlings, okay? No. Look. Look in my eyes. Look. Look. Here's the question. What one thing do you love more than life itself? Dina, I need an answer. What one thing do you love more than life itself? Uh, well, life has really been good to me, I can't say. Oh, I can't believe this. Am I right? He said you'd be too stubborn to answer the question! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> ladies what we have here is a tie between the champion darlings and those challengers the fools for love the coopers okay what we're gonna do is have a sudden death one question one answer one winner all right here's the question and Deanie we're gonna start with you thanks Hannah come on over Deanie one question for as they like to say for all the marbles and here it is what would your husband do if you told him you were expecting one. I've gone and done it now, haven't I? I've put us into a real pickle. Everybody's angry at us. And I wouldn't give two hoots what any of them thought if it weren't for you. I swear I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to die trying. <laughs> promising you the world. I can't even deliver on your father. Oh, I cannot see him again. I cannot see him again. I just have to understand. See, there are things that we said to each other that cannot be undone. Too many things that hurt. if he really cares, see if he really wants to help us. Yeah, I probably do owe it to all three of us, don't I? What do you say? Yes, let's do it. Come on. You recognize him? Uh-uh. I haven't seen him. Nobody's been coming around here looking to go to California. What do the Ohio police want with them anyway? What's that I hear in your back room, a TV? Yeah, Mom and I keep a little bed back there for whoever works nights. I must, I was taking a nap when the last lady came in. I must have forgotten to turn it off. Really? Now, I don't think I've ever seen your back room. Do you mind if I take a look? No, wait, there's nobody in there. See?
get why Ross is so touchy about all my exes. I mean, don't I have to put up with one of his being a mother? I bet you if Vanessa Lewis had been thrown out of house and home, Ross wouldn't be turning her away. <laughs> In fact, I'd be the one who would be sleeping on the couch. I don't, I don't suppose it would kind of interest you to listen to me, would it, Mom? Yes, I am. What is so interesting about that payphone? Son, darling, please. Oh, he and his wife, they're so perky, so cute. I know, man, phony. They're phony. Buzz and Nadine, they're real people. Look how much time they're giving him. He should be disqualified. Her slippers. Ooh, the darling. Don, can you say three words long? Ride home, my friend. Have a seat. Come on out, Buzz. Nadine, here we go. This is your chance to win the whole kit and caboodle. Hannah, let me have the answer. Now, Buzz, it's on you. One answer here to win not only the lawnmower, the cookware, the luggage, but 3,400 U.S. American greenbacks. Here's the question. We asked Nadine, what would your husband do if you told him you were expecting? Your answer. <laughs> what would I do if Deanie told me she was expecting? I, I could donate her body to science. <laughs> Come on, give me the answer. Um, no. Uh, not leave her side. Let's see what she wrote. Not let me out of his sight. Side, side. What's the difference? You're the winner! Yeah! I know I'm a little early uh, for visiting hours, but I'm here to see Alan Spaulding. Who? Alan Spaulding? Sorry, nobody here by that name. What is it you want me to do? Alan Michael has to be taught a lesson. Same as his father before. Stabbing me in the back and making me look like a fool does carry a prize. Well, let's be clear. You want me to bring litigation against Alan Michael? Sue him blind. Break him. Leave him with absolutely nothing. Same price his father paid. No more, no less. Will you do it? Business is business. Of course, Alan Spaulding is here. I should know I'm his son. His son, huh? Yeah. Just show me some ID. Here you go. This him? Yeah, that's him. So come on, where is he? Beats me. Mr. Spaulding was released a month ago. Then may I expect Mr. Tashua to be in touch? This is up to him. I cannot speak for Mr. Tashua. But you will give him my message. Yes, yes, I tell him. It would be to his benefit to call. Everything. You did very well, Susan. And Roger hasn't changed. He's clearly ready to do whatever I ask of him. Which means my business here is concluded. You'll stay and close all of this up. I have a flight to catch. For home. <laughs> 